In this video, I'll show you how to spread self-leveling floor compound like this for your tile or floor insulation. If you're installing tile, especially large format tile, which is anything bigger than 12 inches in any dimension, or a luxury vinyl plank floor or any other type of click lock flooring, you need to make sure that your subfloor is extremely flat. To do that, I'm going to install self-leveling underlayment on this floor. To make sure that your self-leveling underlayment is installed properly, and adheres properly, preparation is key. Since I'm installing over a plywood subfloor, um, I'm going to be using metal lath to reinforce it. I'm also going to be adding construction screws to make sure that the subfloor doesn't move and crack the underlayment. I've already cleaned this floor thoroughly to get any loose debris, dirt, and vacuumed it uh, to make sure that the concrete in the self leveling floor will adhere well. I'm going to go ahead and install some construction screws and that'll keep the two layers of the subfloor because there's two sheets of plywood here. There's a half inch sheet of plywood and then a 5 8 sheet of plywood for a total of an inch and an eighth. Um, it gives it a nice rigid subfloor, but adding these construction screws will make sure that nothing shifts in between the sheets of plywood over time to crack the floor. I've also gone through and replaced any soft spots or bad spots in this floor to make sure that it doesn't flex. If you have any spots that flex in your subfloor, you need to take care of those and remedy those before you install self-leveling underlayment. Otherwise, the self-leveling underlayment will crack. I'm gonna install two inch screws along the joist and inch and a quarter screws in between the joists to make sure that everything is joined together firmly. Self-leveling underlayment does flow to help level everything, but it's not perfect. In order to make sure that my floor is truly level and flat, I'm going to install some markers. Uh, there are products you can buy that are made for this, but I'm just going to use some screws. It's a lot cheaper. Uh, what I'm going to do is start with my laser level, and I'll put a description in the link of this video to this exact model that I'm using. And I've already located the high point in my floor, which is right here. So with the laser level turned on, I can, and a yardstick here, I can move the level up and know that the line is at one and three quarters inch off the high point. Now, because I'm gonna use this underlayment as the backer for my tile, it needs to be at least a quarter inch thick. So that means I'm gonna put screws various places around the floor that are down and a half inches from this line. You can see I'm at two and a quarter inches here. I know I want to have the top of my screw one and a half inches down from the laser line. So it needs to be sticking out three quarters of an inch. So it's about three quarters of an inch out and it puts me at one and a half inches. Now I know that's the right level. Next, you need to seal any seams between the uh, sheeting boards on the floor with some caulk. This makes sure that none of the leveler flows down through there and gets um, into the ceiling of the space below. Um, it can also create uneven spots in your floor if you don't have it well sealed. Before you put down the self-leveler, you need to seal around the perimeter of the room to make sure no self-leveler gets down and flows places where you don't want it. You can see I've already sealed the joints. 
Next, I'm going to take caulk and go along the edge of the subfloor and then use silt seal. Um, I'll put links to this stuff um, where you can find it on Amazon. Uh, so the bead of caulk will go down, then the silt seal, and then I'll staple it down with an electric stapler. Uh, there are other ways you can do this. You can run spray foam insulation along the edge. I'll show you in the video how I do that, uh, where the doorways are. And there's nothing to lean the sill seal against. Uh, you can also buy products that are made for this, but they're a lot more expensive and this works just as well. Apply primer per the manufacturer's recommendation. In this case, it was a dilution of three to one with water. Then install metal lath with at least a one inch overlap between sheets and staple every six inches. Use metal snips to cut out around any objects in the floor. I'll put a link in the description of this video to a pair that you can use. Have multiple bags of self-leveling compound ready to go because it cures very quickly. It's also helpful to have more than one person working this project so one person can be mixing. You can see we have multiple buckets ready to go and we have a measuring bucket set up with a tape line to make sure we have the right water level. You'll want a heavy duty mixer for mixing the self-leveling underlayment be sure not to move the mixer up and down or you can introduce too many air bubbles. Keep it steady while you're mixing. Start in a, your corners and pour the level quick. And then you'll need to agitate it a little bit to get it to flow. And then you want to keep pouring on your working edge and keep a wet edge as you move through the room. Pour along the wet edge. Always add. And then work with the squeegee to break the surface tension and help it flow. Keep an eye on your depth gauge screws to make sure you're getting the proper depth of floor leveler across the floor. The floor is ready to walk on in four hours and ready to tile in as little as four hours depending on the type of tile you're installing. I'll use an oscillating tool with a scraper blade to remove any of the spray foam. Any of the sill seal cut back with the utility knife. During this job, a few things I found helpful and really recommend is I had two friends working with me to help me keep things mixing the whole time while I was pouring and working. So I found that quite essential. The other thing I found really helpful was a heavy duty mixer like this. Um, I'll put a link in the description of this video to where you can buy this one on Amazon. We had this thing going um, through 35 bags back to back with barely any break. It did a great job mixing, plenty of power, didn't overheat. I found with drills with mixing paddles in the past, the drills tend to get overheated. You can ruin a drill doing that. You don't want to lose your mixing in the middle. So I highly recommend getting a hand mixer like this. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and tell me about it in the comments. You can also subscribe to my channel for more helpful tips. Thanks.